He is a Winnipeg writer and editor. His last book, Fear Not, won the Relit Award for Poetry in 2009. His new nonfiction book has the working title Detachment, an adoption memoir, and will appear with Freehand in September this year. Maurice is the communication manager at ECI. All right, so I'm here to talk about the Winnipeg Review, which is uh, coming right up on that screen. There it is. And uh, the Winnipeg Review is a literary magazine that mostly reviews Canadian fiction. And of course, we are fighting obscurity. And I'm here to talk to you about why, if you are interested in book culture, you should be interested in this. And you should probably contribute to the magazine. Um, I'm the editor, Maurice Mirau, and those are some of my books. And I'm involved with this because I think book reviewing is extremely important to the literary community and also to the community of people who care about books. And I hope that's at least some of you. Um, again, because of my uh, Mennonite background, uh, we wanted to start in a good way. So our first issue was called Sex in Winnipeg. And that was great for the search engines. That was in late uh, 2010. And you can see our graphic designer picked an interesting graphic. And then someone, I don't, I don't know who, wrote a, a book review called, uh, about a, a book called Sex Lives of the Interlake Hutterites. And uh, this, is this is the only self-published book that we've ever reviewed. And if you want to have a fight with me later about reviewing self-published books, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, but of course, we had a higher purpose in mind. Uh, people forget that, and they send me emails about that Hutterite book. Here's the most recent one from Mr. Jason Stahl, a gentleman from Ireland who's also written to ask <coughs> why you can't find the sex lives of the Interlake Hutterites on the internet, and I'm confused about that too. Seriously, why do book reviews matter? Uh, book reviews matter because uh, without them, there's no real public discussion, and there's very little context for books, and therefore they become really easy to ignore. Um, many decades ago when I was in graduate school studying Charles Dickens, um, I used this ancient technology called microfilm and I discovered that it was true in the 19th century as well that book reviews mattered and often uh, unknown book reviewers who reviewed Dickens discovered things that it took uh, 100 years for academics to figure out. Why are book reviews in danger? Well, largely because of the idiots who run newspapers. Um, also the school system, but that's a different topic. Let's focus on the newspapers. Uh, newspapers decided that it would be smart to give away their products. Then, when that didn't work out for them, they started hacking off their own limbs. That wasn't very constructive either. One of the limbs they hacked off was the book review section. Thank God we live in Winnipeg, where we have the free press and it still has a pretty good book review section. Thank you, Morley Walker. Next. Okay, reviews versus prize culture. This has been a pet theme for three years, because I care about it. And we'll, we'll get to the dictatorship problem later. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have this thing called prize culture in, in literary Canada, and uh, I have brilliant people like Shane Nielsen who argue that reviews should matter just as much as prizes. Why did we start here? Well, there's an over-expanded caricature of David Bergen done by Dale Cummings, and of course David is an iconic reason why we started here. Winnipeg is filled with fantastic writers and great talent. The original publisher of the Winnipeg Review was my then employer, Great Plains, and uh, the underestimated and brilliant Greg Shilladay put a lot of company money into um, a financially losing cause, which was the Winnipeg Review. Good for him. Uh, the new publisher of the Winnipeg Review is uh, Victor Ant, by a coincidence, who happens to be here. And uh, on Envoy, 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 uh, whatever it is, it's going to turn us into a nonprofit. And so we are going to more profitably lose money and therefore <laughs> pay our writers better. <laughs> Toronto is a world-class city, as we all know, the New York of Canadian publishing, and uh, so it's very uh, satisfying to me that our second largest group of readers, according to Google Analytics, is in Toronto. Internationally, we have an even bigger problem than the big smoke, and that is these two elephants, uh, the other English language speaking countries, who are constantly squeezing us with all their damn books, and they're so damn good. Um, and so that makes things hard in Canadian writing and publishing, but, you know, it's cold here too. Uh, we cover local <coughs> and national stuff in the Winnipeg Review and we're read internationally. There's somebody from Toronto named Kerry Clare who wrote an article about post-national in Kanakistan, another internationally recognized term. Here's some names and numbers. Well, in three years we've published over 300 reviews of Canadian fiction, many of them books that are largely ignored by the so-called uh, media. Uh, 
Relish Design does a wonderful job for us. The Canada Council now gives us a tiny amount of money. Thank you. And all those great people contribute, and your reviews don't get lost because the U of Manitoba archives and stuff. There's our current issue, which was wonderfully guest edited by our friend Greg Chomachuk, who's here by coincidence. <laughs> and uh, what else? Our future plans. We're going to have a short fiction issue next year. And oh, there was a great gunshot there, which we, you can't hear. <laughs> is the Winnipeg Review a Putinocracy? And that's me at six. And you can tell just by looking at that cute kid that the answer to that question is no. Uh, and I'll prove it. I'll include you. This is not possible in Putin's Russia. You can just talk to me, or if you're really shy, you can send me an email at editor at winnipegreview.com if you want to get a professional publishing credit. This is still the best way to do it, and I'll be nice.